In the build show today, we're gonna to talk about the differences between a hand cut and a truss roof. I'm coming to you from a Shiflet Group Architects design house on beautiful Lake Austin. And this house is a perfect example of why I like hand cut roofs so much. You know, in the last 15 years, as I moved from production builder to custom builder, I've done nothing but hand cut roofs and there's so many advantages over trusses. Let's go take a look at this house. I'm gonna show you why I like these hand cut roofs so much. As you're deciding on the differences between a hand cut traditional roof like this one and a truss roof, I think there's three things that you're gonna take into account. Number one, budget. Number two, your roofing material, what's going on top of this framing. And number three, what are your requirements for that attic space? So let's get into those. Number one, budget. A traditional hand cut roof is typically more expensive than a truss roof. It's really why most production builders in the US since the 70s have used nothing but truss roofs. Number two, roofing type. Now if you're using asphalt shingles, you don't have necessarily a lot of weight on the roof, but in the houses I build, oftentimes we've got a concrete, a clay, or a slate tile roof. And in fact, this house with its clay tile roof, we've got a lot of force, a lot of weight on this roof. And so really this was my only choice. You can see here, I've got two by eight rafters, and then I've got a giant triple LVL ridge beam. So this roof is able to take the amount of weight that's gonna come on top of it. And number three, openness. This is the space that's in the attic space. You know, I'm in Texas, we build a lot of slab on grade, so we've got needs for both mechanical uh, equipment, duct work, and storage up in our attic spaces because we don't have basements. And so a hand cut roof is really gonna get you that. You know, if you've ever been in a 1950s or 1960s house, that's one thing you'll notice, wide open spaces, lots of storage, lots of room to run mechanicals, and that's what I love about these hand cut roofs. Now, let me talk about another thing that's interesting on this house. You'll notice that the sheathing here is toothed on the end, and in fact, we've run our sheathing all the way up. Now, most hand cut roofs, they're gonna have a bird's mouth cut, and this tail is actually gonna stick out and take the roof as the roof comes out of the building and, has a, and creates an overhang. In this case though, you'll see I've got this little cut right here, that tooth design. What's happening here is I'm gonna sister on a rafter tail. There's gonna be a four by six dug for tail sistered on right here, and that's gonna create the overhang. And I love this detail that my frame carpenter does. He's bringing that plywood all the way up, and now that sheathing can actually be physically sealed to the underside of my roof deck. This is gonna air seal the house. It's gonna bring the waterproofing right up to the top, and, and thirdly, and most importantly, we're not gonna vent this attic and we're gonna really prevent those bugs from being able to get into this attic space. Now, most of my houses have sealed and conditioned attics, meaning I've either got spray foam or I've got rigid foam on top of the roof. So I'm not venting these attic spaces and this is a great deal. Let's actually go to another house and I'm gonna show you how we implement this detail. All right, so another house, same architect, same frame carpenter. And I think this one's gonna show off a couple of those details that we saw in construction now in a much more finished stage. Look at those dug fur rafter tails sticking out there. Now you can see why we toothed that sheathing coming up. I think this detail makes a huge difference because now I can run that peel and stick all the way to the roof deck. In this case, that silver peel and stick you're seeing here, that's Polywall's Aluma Flash. And where it butts up to the roof deck and around all those rafter tails coming through, you've got that blue sealant. That's a detail sealant, which is basically a fluid applied weather barrier. Also by Polywall, this is their Blue Barrier 2200. That's basically gonna glue down the edge of the peel and stick. It's gonna waterproof us there, but equally importantly, it's gonna air seal the house really well and make sure we don't get any bugs in there. I love this detail. Now this house does have a conditioned attic. I think we saw this a little earlier as we talked about getting mechanicals into the attic space. So we've got a sealed conditioned attic. We don't have any venting that's going on there. Guys, thanks for joining me. Hopefully this helped you out in figuring out whether traditional hand cut roof rafters might be the way to go for your projects. I'd love to have you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and please check out the, the sponsors for the show. We've got some great companies we've worked with for years sponsoring this show. Great products, I use them on all my builds. These are companies I really know and trust. You're gonna see a link to all those guys in the description below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. I got a bunch of bugs right in front of you right now. Really? No, like in between, halfway in between you and me. You see it? Oh, them? I can see it, yeah. That's weird. Does it look weird? Yeah.
hang. I see that. <laughs> That's a blooper for sure. That might be the intro to this build show. <laughs>